हेलो एवरी वन आई एम प्रिया सा आई एम स्टार्टिंग कंप्यूटर इंजीनियरिंग इन एस वी एन आई टी सूरत रिसेंटली जे पी मॉर्गन केम फॉर कैंपस रिक्रूटमेंट एंड आई गॉट प्लेसड इन इट सो हियर आई एम आई वॉन्ट टू शेयर सम ऑफ माई इंटरव्यू एक्सपीरियंस एंड हाउ द प्रोसेस गोज विथ यू सो दैट इट मे हेल्प यू इफ यू आर अपियरिंग फॉर इट the whole process can the whole interview uh, the whole selection procedure was uh, divided into three stages first was the uh, written qu uh, quantitative quantitative aptitude test and uh, it was of one and half hour and uh, after that those who were sh uh, shortlisted from the test were selected for personal interviews and there were going to be two interviews first was the personal and technical uh, interview and the second was the uh, hr round so this was all uh, the process was about Uh, so the first stage that was the uh, aptitude test it was not online it was a written aptitude test and it was taken by a third party merit track so the whole test is consisted of 80 or 82 questions and uh, it was divided into two section first was verbal ability and logical thinking and the second was technical knowledge technical so the uh, time uh, allotted was one and half hour for the whole thing uh the uh, questions in the aptitude they were not tough they were very basic questions upon all the topics that are normally in quantitative aptitude uh, so they were pretty easy to solve if you go through the basics uh, that's not much they just wanted to test the speed of the candidate how they approach the question not even approach how they solve it in uh, less time and the verbal ability and logical thinking that was pretty easy the english section the verbal section uh, Uh, one comprehension was there that was uh, relatively very easy so they just wanted to check uh, that uh, how much efficiency you um, give uh, when you have less time because the technical section was somewhat lengthy they have uh, programs uh, whole programs to solve so this quantitative aptitude if you go through on any normal or basic standard book that would uh, be easy for you to go on to uh, the second technical uh, part uh, it has uh, problems on uh, like c language there were programming questions that uh, they were given a uh, they were given a program and then you have to solve it that what would be the uh, uh, output of the program or uh, given uh, sorting method was given and which is the correct uh, code for that math method that was uh, asked that was asked and uh, then um, Uh, then there were questions on operating system that uh, operating system is the core of computer engineering so if you are preparing to, uh, for that i would tell you to go through all the basics like deadlock semaphores and uh, process schedule process scheduling was uh, somewhat two or three questions were asked on that so that is that was a little bit tough and then there were one or two normal networking questions that uh, what does dhcp consist of or uh, what is the work of dns uh that is domain name uh, system so those were the basic they, these are uh, comparatively uh, basic questions in those subject itself but i would uh, tell you to prepare it thoroughly because this will uh, will be helpful for you in any interview that you are appearing for if that is a core computer engineering job or a software engineering job they look for all this and then the programs were all on c uh, not c++ or java they just wanted to check the basic uh, logic that you apply while uh, programming uh, so uh, there were very easy questions like uh, finding prime number so what will be the code of prime number and then if you are going to um, uh, alternately you have to print any uh, pattern then what would be the code for it then they were uh, they um, uh, specifically targeted on the flow charts they have given three or four flow charts and uh, it was a programming flow chart that we that is a standard process that before writing any algorithm we uh, prepare a flow chart of how the program is going to uh, work or how the certain code will uh, execute so flow charts were there so it is uh, it is not a normal practice for computer engineers to go uh, you know make flow charts so it uh, um, it is somewhat time consuming so i'll uh, 
ask you to prepare for it because flowcharts uh, those are little bit you know time consuming so that's where uh, many people uh, got their got stuck and the time was not enough because there were some 50 questions on quantitative aptitude and 30 questions on uh, this technical but they were little bit on a mediocre level so if you're going through all this uh, uh, start practicing and start coding more and more because any technical interview you'll sit with they will ask a code or a uh, algorithm anything so I will tell you to uh, prepare more of that start coding start writing because if you see that in paper it would be pretty much difficult if you haven't practiced at all so basically they were all uh, basics of programming and um, uh, also uh, the loops the loops were uh, mainly asked like in three four questions there were just loops how a while loop will work or how for loop will work and all of that so and uh, if you have you know these many amount of questions and only one and a half hour for that you think it will be you'll be able to do it but uh, certainly these are the kind of tests where they uh, test the speed and your decision of which question you'll give more importance to and it was sectional cutoff so these two sections there were sectional cutoff in both both of them and uh, because of that were 50 questions and everyone thought that it would be you know if we uh, concentrate more on uh, the aptitude part we'll be able to get through the cutoff also but they were more on looking at, at the technical side also so if, if you're going for any of these kind of tests i will suggest you to first complete the technical section because they are they are not here for uh, the management or your logical ability they are here for how much you know in the programming part or technical knowledge so I'll uh, suggest you or advise you to go through that first and then come to the quantitative because quantitative is uh, relatively easy to solve. Coming to the second stage that was the interpersonal interview process. It was the technical, uh, the whole process was mainly based on testing your, technic testing your technical knowledge. So the in the interview itself, uh, the position that the company came for was technical analyst and this is the first time JB Morgan coming for uh, recruiting people from the final year itself. Last time uh, it came in the campus for the first time for interns. So in the technical interview, mine was the first. So when I went inside, they asked me, uh, 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 first they uh, took our resumes. So they studied our whole resume and the whole interview was resume based. They weren't going for technical uh, specific specific technical knowledge or something they will only ask you what you've written in resumes so I'll personally suggest you if you are going for these kind of company where the job profile itself is uh, very uh, what I can say it was just an over brief it was not specific like a software developer or engineer or dotnet developer I'll tell you to prepare your resume thoroughly whatever you have written in it be sure that you know all those stuffs just don't write it as, uh, just because you want to lengthen your resumes no company want your resumes more than two pages so if you are going to lengthen it by three or four pages they won't look at you they just want genuine people who have knowledge of what they have written or done so coming to the interview part first they asked me what new technologies i know or have worked on so i told them cloud computing and big data because cloud computing is our subject in seventh semester itself and big data is the one that i'm working uh, my final year project on so they first asked me about cloud that what i know about cloud computing and what its general concept is so coming to that part cloud computing is now becoming a uh, the latest technology or uh, what I'll say is that the base for every technology or every new thing that is being developed it is more on cloud because data is keep uh, keeping uh, data is getting accumulated more and more and only cloud is capable of handling it uh, you know efficiently so they were main focusing on the people who are aware of the new technologies that are going on around so they asked me about the basic functionality of how cloud works what is it con concept it's a service model it deployment models and I told them what it is and after that they asked me if I have personally worked on any cloud because cloud is basically virtualization sitting somewhere and then you are 
uh, manipulating data that is coming from California or somewhere else that is far remote places so cloud let you uh, go to all those places without physically you moving so that is everything basically right in front of you and that is a very large amount of data so they asked me if I've worked on it so I told them that a normal VMware or VM box where you uh, download it on your own uh, personal desktop or computer and then on your base OS that is your uh, I suppose you have a Windows laptop and you are you want to use Linux so without bifurcating the memory space or boot space because if you're having two operating system it will just divide up the space so you can install a VMware and then you can run another OS on the same laptop so they were uh, pretty much impressed that I've worked on it but then they asked if I've worked on any real-time data so real-time cloud system or I'm part of it then I told them that our own college SVNIT has its own community cloud like SVNIT own personal server that is not it is a local host so that is not accessible from outside so that is a kind of a cloud environment so they all wanted to know if I've worked on any real-time application based cloud like as your Microsoft as your have uh, hosted any website so I told them no and they were like it is fine and then they asked about my final year project so uh, the final year project it was uh, my project was indexing techniques uh, for big data so they asked me what I know about big data then I told uh, it was a fairly general question that big data the name itself suggests what it is that is the data keep you accu accumulating and you want to uh, manipulate that data or take out uh, any required or particular information from data without consuming more time so that is the just uh, te techniques that are that you, uh, it has to be very efficient in all those yeah. data extraction and manipulation so uh, uh, then I told them what indexing techniques are they uh, basically big data has uh, the indexing techniques used in big data are uh, categorized under three categories that is non artificial intelligence artificial intelligence and collaborative artificial intelligence then they asked me what uh, all methods are there in collaborative uh, AI and AI and whether I have worked on them or or worked on them or not then I told them that it is it is a whole final year project so it will go through the la um I'll go through whole year and uh, right now the basic introduction I uh, I knew that at that time so I told them what I knew after that uh, then they uh, started uh, going through my resume then they uh, first asked me about because I have done the whole last year I had done many uh, projects on uh, academic projects and uh, work on uh, web technologies our front-end technology so they he asked me all about it so I told all of my projects and uh, what technologies I've worked on them and then he asked me about I worked a project on um, uh, using angular JS and PHP so he asked me uh, what the basic concept of angular JS uh, angular JS is uh, angular JS is basically a MVC framework that is model view controller so he asked me if I knew the working or what the basic principle is behind the MVC or how it works and I told them that uh, it is basically MVC is a, uh, uh, the controller that different web pages may have the same uh, look or layout but the content is different so using MVC it uh, could be uh, handled efficiently so that was all about it then he asked me all what technologies I've worked on that is PHP, Java, J, uh, JavaScript, Angular, JS, MySQL and uh, HTML bootstrap and then he asked me uh, what uh, uh, which part interests me more whether it is back-end or front-end because not all developers go for back-end or not all for front-end so I told him that I have uh, more interest in front-end because I've worked mostly on it and whenever there was a project when there were more than one people in it I preferredly work on front-end but then also uh, where there were individual projects I have done back-end too so whosoever part you are comfortable with it, it is okay it is not necessary to know both but whatever you are knowing be sure to know uh, be sure that you know everything or whatever you are trying to tell them that you know this much be sure that you know all those stuff just don't go in and bluffing because they will catch it
so this was all it about then he uh, came to programming languages he asked me what programming languages i was comfortable with so i told him that i worked on c and java and then he asked me java up till what level i have done so i told him that basics in java that is normal core java i have done my course on and it, there were many academic projects that were related to java or we need coding in java so he asked me all about it then he asked me what an interface in java is that is a fairly basic question uh, uh, what an interface is I told him that it provides uh, a basic body or prototype for any function to work on then he asked me what is um, uh, a main drawback in java so i told him that multiple inheritance is not allowed and he asked me whether there is a way where we can achieve it so yes uh, there multiple inheritance in java can be achieved through interfa interfa uh, interface then he asked me why multiple inheritance is not allowed in java then i told him that if a parent has same name then the compiler can get confused which parent to get the method from extract from so that's why multiple inheritance is not allowed in java and java is basically based on all the inbuilt functions so it become pretty much difficult so that was about java then he asked me uh, do i know what collections in java is so this is fairly advanced topic that is not core java that is a core concept of advanced java and not many people know it so if you are writing java in your resume also go through the advanced subtopics that are there that is collection hash set map reduce that is in data science i think i have not taken it but then collections was a java part so i have started it then he asked me what uh, java sets are then i told him uh, array list then uh, uh, array list link list hash set hash map set reduce these are all the collection then he asked me a question that if i have a thousand files in a directory how will i sort it using collections then i told him that if you have thousand files what we can do is we can have an array list array list is a dynamic version of array and what it does is uh, if you have uh, if you want to remove some elements from the array normal array will have those spaces empty in array list if you are removing something the size will adjust accordingly so if you have only 500 uh, the data 500 entries in the array list it will only have 500 it won't have space that is predefined it doesn't need to be defined it keeps get adding as you add new element so it was like that and then i told him that what we can do is we can store all the name of the directories in uh, array list and then we can uh, array list uh, because uh, java is fairly based on all the inbuilt functions it has mostly inbuilt functions so you don't need to code all that much that is the main advantage of java that i told him and then uh, there is a uh, inbuilt function called uh, collection dot sort what we can do is we just provide a name of the array list in the sort and it will uh, it will sort all the uh, all the elements in the file chronologically so it is just a two three line code you don't need to write a hundred line code just to sort thousand files in a directory so uh, uh, that was about the collections uh, then in java he asked me all uh, the fundamentals basic fundamentals of object oriented programming that we have four fundamentals i explained them then he asked me for an example in inheritance uh, so uh, that I explained everything with example what you need to do is if they are asking for an oops concept based on oops concept just take one example and try to uh, try to explain them each and every concept using that example all only because that will be pretty much easier and less time consuming they won't have time for you only they have to interview others also so that is one tip for, for you then they asked me that uh, what other programming uh, language I have done then I told them that I worked on C so they asked whether I'm more comfortable with Java and C if that kind of question is that they're just uh, uh, you know they are just testing you so test them I, I told them that uh, my whole last year uh, the whole last third year of my academic uh, education was the project that were given were fairly on C so uh, at that time I was more acquainted with C but that doesn't mean I have forgotten Java so I knew the basics and if I had to work on a project on Java I, I can e be able to do that so in C he asked me 
uh, the same question that uh, thousand files in a directory and I have to sort them alphabetically then what I'll do so what my approach was I told them that uh, because uh, in the pre-placement talk they have told that they use more on Linux so I tried to provide them a solution that would be easily implemented in Linux environment so I told them what we can do is we can use grep that is a command in Linux and uh, that uh, is used for pattern matching so what we can do is we can first uh, extract the ASCII character ASCII value of each uh, the starting of the file name first we have to uh, get the names in the pattern that is uh, every file would be stored in dot slash and then the file name so by uh, matching this we can have all the file names and then we can store it in linked list so I told them that I'm using linked list is there any space um, uh, space constraint or time constraint so they told them that uh, it is okay you don't have to worry about time uh, time or space constraint just think that you have much ample space because uh, sometimes what they ask is that you have to optimize your code properly so they told me there is no need for that then I told them that uh, using pattern matching we can first extract all the file names and from that we can sort it alphabetically and then there will be groups that I suppose there are more than one file name starting with the same letter so they will be grouped upside a uh, group uh, similarly uh, chronologically um, five files of uh, five files starting from A then B C uh, etc and then he told me what if I have to sort between those five files starting with the same name then I told them what we can do is we can uh, extract single character or a ASCII value of each character and then match it with uh, match it with the respective names that would be fairly easy just like they do it in dictionary so that was uh, about C programming then they asked if there are data structures or linked list in C then I told them yes it is and they asked me what other data structures are there uh, then I told them uh, array, linked list, then trees and all of that. So he was done on that. Then he came to uh, DBMS that is database management system and MySQL because all of my projects I have worked on MySQL. So uh, that was uh, then coming to that he asked me the, whether I was aware of that or not then I told him yes uh, we had a subject and uh, I was uh, I worked on MySQL so I knew it then he asked me um, uh, what normalization is normalization is a very fairly important part of DBMS so if you're going to uh, going to learn or going to practice DBMS I'll tell you do concentrate on queries and solving queries or SQL but this is also important because it is an uh, integral part of optimization so uh, from that he asked me uh, what type of normalization to, uh, do I know so I told him uh, first normal form second third and uh, boys called normal form then he asked me what were the criteria so I told him all the criteria of be, uh, how a query or how a table would be in DCNF form or not and uh, then I used certain terms that was candidate key and super key one more thing if you are going for a technical interview and you are using any technical term please know what that technical term is that is very important because people go on there and uh, use any technical term to explain a certain concept but they don't know about that technical terms so whatever technical concept or term you are using please know uh, please uh, you know fairly prepare it that what it is or even if a brief idea would be fine so i told them what candidate keys what a super key is what a primary or about a non primary attribute is then he asked me about delete query delete query is not uh, somewhat uh, not uh, generally used uh, in the MySQL queries so I um, he asked me what uh, what would I do or what would the query be if I have to delete all the rows from the table so I told him that we can drop the table so he fairly insisted on that he want to use a delete query so that was one question that I didn't know the I, I, will, I didn't remember at that time what um, was the use of delete key because I haven't used it so he was like it's fine whatever solution you think can we do you can do that so I told him sir if 
that is uh, you want to you if you are using if you want to delete all the rows from the table and like empty first what you can do is just set any uh, numerical attribute to zero and then or clear the table or set or update you can use set or update all the values to zero or null that would be efficient but then he was like he want to delete all the rows so what i told him that we can drop the table and he didn't wanted to do it and he asked that you have worked on so many projects in mysql and you haven't used delete one so i told him that sir if we wanted to delete all the rows we will drop the table because it will be more if you are not there dropping the table and you have a thousand row thousand tuples in a table it is just uh, consuming the space so i told him it would be more efficient and energy uh, like not sorry energy memory saving if you just drop the table and you can create it anytime you want because it is fairly easy in sql so that was the uh, database then he came to uh, sdlc's uh, software development life cycle if you are going for any software related or developer role we think that software engineering is not a, it is very theoretical concept and it won't be used but every interview i gave in they did ask me about sdlc life cycles and its models because it was our subject in seventh semester itself and i knew didn't knew much about it but i know the basics of all the phases of sdlc so he asked me that then uh, i told him that i uh, it is okay if you don't know everything about it but anything would be fine just either say it if you are not confident in the answer just tell him sir i don't know now because there uh, it's been much time that i haven't used it or that you don't know about it it is fine be honest don't try to bluff don't try to lie to them they will catch through you they are there that means they know better than you so don't try to get your way through lies so i told them sir i don't know uh, the whole concept but i know the basics so he asked me what i knew in sdlc so i told them the six stages or the main important stages of sdlc life cycle what were they and what work is done in them then he asked me whether i knew the agile method because it is very important so he asked me about agile and waterfall so waterfall waterfall model i knew so i told him what it is there and what are advantages and disadvantages is and then agile i just had a, a very you know vague idea so i told them so i don't know much about this topic but i know this much so he was like yeah it is okay and uh, that was all in the technical section then he asked me what uh, uh, this was all and then he asked me if i had any questions for them so uh, i just asked about their company or the profile that we're working on how uh, easy it was for us to switch profiles or how we are going to start so that was all b uh, if they ask at the end of every interview they will ask you uh, that if you have any questions be sure that you have at least one question mainly they will solve all your queries in ppt but if you so sure. if you tell them that you have a certain question they'll be more than happy because they want to know that how inquisitive or curious you are because in these kind of jobs you cannot just stay satisfied with one thing you need to be inquisitive you need to be more curious you need to ask questions even if it is repeated it is fine they would be more than happy to answer it so be sure to answer uh, to question answers uh, question uh, sorry to question them uh, any doubt you have or even if you ask about their experience that is more good enough and uh, uh, one tip everybody everybody tells you if you're going to appear for an interview that you do this you do that try to uh, lend their try to try to take your time or do this do that i'll tell you to do whatever you want because they are not hiring you for what others told you they are hiring you for what you are so if you are if you are nervous it is okay because they are some dignitaries or veterans in their own field they will know more than you and it is okay to be nervous just be confident in whatever you are telling them you know a certain answer be confident and smile all of that if you don't know any answer it is fine we are humans we tend to do mistakes we tend to forget they will understand that but show them that you are curious you are a fast learner and you will learn any new technology or any new work that they assigned you when time requires they are there to test that only how enthusiastic you are about new technologies how much you study academic career pointers 
it is fine with that but you need to get updated with your own field so do that and whatever you're writing in resume in your resumes be thoroughly prepared then he asked me about my internship where i did my internship and what technology did i work on so i told them that my internship was in uttam was online shopping cart and i worked on search engine optimization so he asked me whether i knew the technology or not before and so i told him sir the first day when i was assigned the project i didn't knew anything about it because seo was fairly a very new topic but it is a rising one and any web technology top uh, web technology field you go to seo is important so i told them uh, that uh, how i worked on it and how was it concept so he asked me one or two questions on that how seo is and uh, what its basic functionality or what is basic work is then i told him that it is just to um, uh, show your uh, uh, website or your page or your link on uh, top searches so that people a uh, user whenever he enters a specific keyword for uh, that is related to your website uh, your your website or your company should be on the first from that search list so it would be a kind of advertising also and uh, uh, promoting your own market so it was all strategic and uh, related to search engine and bots so i told them all of that so this was it for the personal interviews coming to the third uh, third round or third stage of the process it was the hr round so hr round as in every companies it is fairly easy they just want to you know know what you are or for the fairly the most general question is tell me about yourself so that's how my hr interview started so he asked me tell me about yourself and i told him a brief uh, description of what you are or who are you that is i want to know don't go on repeating your whole resume that is not just uh, try to complete this question in 5 to 7 lines where where you are from uh, okay how many family members you are what is your uh, cgpa and that stuff that is fine and you can end it, end it with your hobbies or any specific extra curricular activity that you think it is very prominent or you have done i am the training and placement coordinator of my own department so i told him that and then um, and then ended with the cgpa that uh, this is my cgpa and these are my hobbies so this was it then uh, he asked me about uh, what my aspirations were or what my future work what my future plans are so i told him for the five next five years i want to develop myself as an individual and see how am i in a corporate environment i want to take a taste of it and then after that i'll think about it i haven't thought much so this was what uh, i told him if you are you know looking for a job and you're still planning to do ms please don't tell them about it inside they that is called you know that is fraud if you are if you know that you are not going to appear for the company just don't waste anyone else's seat so uh, if then uh, that was uh, that was that question then he asked me about my family so i told him uh, how what family members do i have and what they are doing right now so it was about it uh, then he came to it that uh, job preference because jp morgan was coming for the first time and it was coming for bangalore profile only so he asked me if i have any bars or restrictions on the place itself so i told him that uh, it is free i am free to any place that they are uh, putting me in and he explained me the process of how uh, we will be continuing that our joining would be in probably august late late july or august and then we have an air training program of two months in some places other than our own joining place and then joining will be later on and all the benefits and perks of the company itself and then he came to the part he told me that uh, uh, since i was a training and placement coordinator i knew the statistics of all the placed uh, placement and records so he asked me uh, that uh, jp morgan wanted that uh, jp morgan was first time uh, recruiting from all all campuses and going through all the campus recruitment that was the first this uh, all over india drive so they were taking very le less number of people and they uh, so they just wanted loyal students those who are interested in joining the company so he told me that uh, if i get any better offer than this would i uh, consider uh, jp morgan or them then i told him that i am aware of this uh, rule that if i get placed in jp morgan i won't uh, be allowed for any other company so i told him that that i am fine with it and i would love to work in jp morgan and get the experience so uh, 
दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट इट सो दिस वॉज इट सो एच आर इज फेली बेजिक इट इज वेरी वॉट एज इट इज वेरी लाइट एंड दे जस्ट स्ट्रेस ऑन योर कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स और हाउ यू प्रेजेंट योर सेल्फ वॉट योर एस्पिरेशन आर और वॉट योर फ्यूचर प्लान्स आर दैट्स ऑल सो दैट इज ऑल इन एच आर इंटरव्यू सो दिस वॉज दी होल प्रोसेस ऑफ जे पी मॉर्गन आई वुड लव इफ यू गेट एनी एक्सपीरियंस फ्रॉम दिस वीडियो और एनी टिप्स and uh, i'll tell you all the best prepare yourself prepare your subjects thoroughly whatever you're going to say keep your resume short and up to the point don't go on lengthening and explaining every project you did that you don't need to do so one line would be fine and uh, be confident be yourself that's what they are hiring you for be yourself smile it's okay to make mistakes and all the best for your future and endeavors thank you so much